Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. As I said in a previous video at some stage, I'm looking at doing a project per month and picking a theme. So this month of August, I will be doing a bit of a study of uh, Edith Holding. So I've been collecting her books, the publications from her works for many years. Uh, they pop up in um, thrift stores or op shops. I see them on eBay, Etsy, um, uh, everywhere. Book um, Topia is another one. I think that's a big UK company. They're everywhere. They range between, sometimes I get them for about $24 Australian, sometimes $40 Australian. It sort of depends. There are some crazy prices out there, but you know, you don't need to pay that because if you just have a little patience, they will um, pop up. So I've been collecting, as I said, for a little bit of time and I've been wanting to do something with them in the way of uh, a journal or stitchery or a bit of everything, even from painting. So I've decided that this is the month. I still don't know what I'm going to do. Like that's just typical me. I've got a hundred ideas and I just want to drift across all of it. So the videos coming up for the month will be a mix of everything. And then hopefully by the end of it, he's hoping, fingers crossed, we will have um, something, a journal of something. So I thought, first of all, I'll go through the different books that I've collected in case you want to start um, sort of adding them to your wish list. So I sort of have this little list of books that I just have written down in my uh, messages on my phone. And whenever I see something pop up on Etsy, I think, um, yep, that's it. That's my price bracket and I'll grab it. So that way, you know, I'm constantly searching, constantly looking, and it's just good fun. It's like um, going hunting for stock or going hunting for goodies on your couch. And if you've got your list and you know your budget and what the average price is already, it just makes it easy to make a decision. So the first one I wanna show you is the story of Edith Holding. This one I actually found in an op shop at uh, Howard in um, Queensland. So the last place I would have thought that I'd find this one. It really is um, just her story. And if you're wanting to collect her books, this is a good one to have in your um, collection because it really delves into the story of the family, the father, the, uh, the husband who was a sculptor, it's just a beautiful read and um, it sort of, yeah, it sort of takes you back in time. So what I thought I might do through this whole series is I'll go through this book and just find some little morsels of uh, information that we may not know uh, about the family and what they did. And um, during each of the uh, episodes, um, I'll just sort of recant some of the uh, information that is in this book because it's just it's really interesting interesting especially when she started doing all of her illustrations for children's books just beautiful beautiful work we're all familiar with her nature diary and her um, country diary but this is really delves into all of the other work that her family herself they um, they did a lot of illustrations There'll be also like books in there that I haven't come across yet, like this one here. I do have one of the children's books, which I'll show you, which was a bit random when I found it. But um, what I'll do is um, maybe show you that next. So that's the first one. If you want to collect her story, that's a must because it really gives you a snapshot of her life. So that's the first one. I'll pop that aside. I'll write all the details of these books in... Um, in the description below. Now, this is one of the children's books that was um, illustrated by her. Now, Rowena is her great, great uh, niece. Now, I did see on one of the jackets her story. Where is it? Um, I think uh, it, it'll pop up. I just can't put my hand on it. Maybe it's in Nature Notes. No, I just looked at that. Anyway, it's a little bit of a story about um, Rowena, who I'm sure it's her great, great, 
maybe great niece, but we'll clarify that as we go through. So she has the rights to all of the illustrations and the works of her, um, I'm going to say aunt. I don't think it's a grandmother. I think it's an aunt. Lucky niece is all I'll say. And Rowena wrote this story about the hedgehog feast and then used the um, images that she had of um, Edith holding. It might be actually in this book on the jacket. Yeah, ah, here it is. So this is Rowena. She's a great niece of Edith Holding and is one of the um, is the owner of both the original illustrations of this book and Country Diaries of the Edwardian Ladies. Now there's Country Diaries and there's Nature Diaries. So there's actually two. Uh, she continues to um, this tradition of talented family work in her own professional life as an artist. Now Edith herself. She was born in um, 1871. She was one of seven children in the Midlands and could, was um, part of a family that were paint manufacturers. So the family lived in a small village and she had written and her first novel, which is Nature Diaries in 1906. So Nature Diaries is the first one. Now I'll just bring down a cover of Nature Diaries. Now, it can appear with two different covers that I've found so far. There may be more, but they've reproduced these books so many times. That's why there's, there is quite a lot of them out there. So, for example, this one was printed in 1989, that one. And this one, which you do see a fair bit of around, was printed in... 1989 yeah so there you go two different dust covers let's just have a look underneath of the dust cover and that one's plain okay and they pretty much look the same inside the layout let's have a little look yeah so they're identical but have different covers. So that's where it can trick you up. And that's where it got me for a little bit too, because I was buying them around when I saw them online. And when I got them, I was like, that's the same book, but um, just slightly different. It's like that cookbook. Um, back in the 80s, there was this big cookbook. Now, uh, I'll think of the name of the lady. And I think I bought three or four of them thinking they were all part of her collection and it was the same book inside. So everyone got that cookbook for a little while for Christmas. Anyway, I digress. So pretty much um, Edith, now I'm sure you sort of know the basics of all this story. Edith, um, as I said, published her first book in 1906. Then the, in 1977, the Country Diaries was published. It was the bestseller immediately, especially in Britain and America. After attending art school, she worked as an illustrator with her drawings, often featuring in books. Several books were published. Now, I haven't found a lot of those particular books, but um, I'm sure they're out there. <clears throat> really um, be lovely to get a few of those and have a good look through them. She later moved to London in, and in 1911, she married... Ernest Smith, he was a sculptor. So, you know, birds of a feather flock together, these creative people. They lived in Chelsea and they had no children. Unfortunately, on her 49th year, on the 16th of March, 1920, she died. Tragically, she drowned. And it was because she was in the water collecting buds from a chestnut tree. So you imagine the clothes she was wearing she has somehow slipped, whatever, I don't know the exact details, but she just slipped and drowned. So she was probably full of all that clothing they used to, to wear back in the day. And the poor thing has gone in and that's it. But um, obviously doing what she loved, collecting chestnuts from a chestnut tree and most likely drawing them. Very sad. Imagine if she got some more time. You know, she's only 49 she lived to 100, imagine the drawings that we would be looking at today. 
just stunning. But she did do a lot of work and these books, oh look, this was gifted to someone in 1979. Oh, how sweet. Oh, how sweet. It's definitely a used book. It's got that feel about it. So that's, uh, oh, don't know what that is. Anyway, close that up. It's a treasure. So that's one of, there's a picture of Edith. Look at her. Surrounded by plants. Beautiful photo. So as I said, we've got the story of Edith um, holding herself. Um, this is one of the children's books, but her, um, now we did establish, let me just get that straight in my brain before I start going off on a tangent. Great niece. So it's only one great. So great niece um, produced the words and used her um, aunt's pictures. Now, in addition, I'll come to the main ones, but this is another one that popped up on my radar a little while ago. It's a pretty big book, and it obviously came out when cross-stitch was a big thing. So when was it printed? There's the lady that created the stitcheries, Annette Mitchell. And in here is all sorts of crafts, and she's done it by month. So each month was a different project. Now, this was printed in 1985. Thank you to the great niece, the owner of the original works and the publication, making the publication of this book possible. So it's quite interesting. There's a lot of things in here that I'd never, never make, but look at the lace on that collar. But in amongst it are some gorgeous large shots of these, um, drawings but what caught my eye is these little cross stitches now i haven't done cross stitch for ages a long time but they're so cute some of them so i must say some of the cross stitches don't look like an edith drawing but some of them do so i might as we go through the month pick this book back up like look at that i don't know if you can see that See the, whoops, see that stitchery there on the linen? Just beautiful. So that's got potential, that cross stitch. So I don't know if cross stitch is your thing or you've done the thing and you don't want to do the thing anymore. I know I did a lot of cross stitch and I honestly don't know if my eyes will handle it. Like there's another one, just gorgeous. Maybe I can use it as inspiration and just stitch it because I have a feeling my eyes will struggle with that. Like I'm not an old girl, but my eyes are certainly showing wear from probably doing all these types of activities like the poppies. Just beautiful. But yeah, I'd have to increase that in size somewhat. Maybe. We'll see. Do I have time to be doing cross stitches? Probably not. Look at the mat gorgeous so very interesting book love well, they've knitted them into the jumper huh. stunning oh i wish i had a a great aunt that was still doing cross stitch i would order a few of these things just to add to my edith holden collection look at the berries oh. so this is worth grabbing if you can find it because there's these little smatterings of things in here that may be of interest to you. So it's the Country Diaries Book of Craft. Definitely worth grabbing if you can find it. So I'll put that to one side now. So I've shown you three so far. We've got the story of Edith, a children's book example, and then the craft book. Now we come to the next two books. Like I said, there is... Um, the nature notes and then the country diary okay now the country diary is probably the most well known when you go through it straight away you'll recognize these images now I've managed to grab a couple of these over my time and I'm talking like over five years I probably get one a year I could buy more because they they are around but you know the habit has to stop. 
So that's why this sort of project came to be. I'm like, well, if I love these books so much, why don't I have a play with them? It's time to donate one to the, the craft and um, do something. Uh, I've seen that image around a lot. So that's where it's come from, Edith. That's in a lot of um, digital kits out there, a, a similar sort of look with the bird's nest. So that's interesting. And the, all those eggs. <coughs> So gorgeous. Now, as I said, I do have a couple of these um, and they are all similar but printed at different times. So it's just the paper inside that's just, you know, can change, can be quite yellow or, uh, you know, not as yellow depending on the aging of it. So that's the Country Diaries, which we all know and love, and then Nature Notes. And the real difference between the two is the text. In Nature Notes, which was the first one, uh, it's just typeset, standard typing. Pictures are all different. Some of them you can sort of see belong with each other, but it's just, you know, typed. But there's beautiful poems throughout it from Wordsworth and uh, Tennyson. Depends if you like those, those poets or not, but they are, it's a beautiful presented book. There's a little bit of the original writing. So when she then did the second one, which became the bestseller, she used Edith's actual text from her diaries. So very, very interesting. Now they can have different dust covers as well. Like there's two, they're the same, but slightly different. So for example, this one, what if there's a printing, 1977, first published. This edition was 2000. So this one printed in 1977. This one is published. Uh, it's one of one of the originals by the looks of it. And this is interesting because down the bottom here, so in June 1977, the first one came out. The second edition, 1977, the third edition in September 1977. 4th edition, October 1977, the 5th edition, December 1977. Those must have sat around a little bit. The 6th edition came out in 1978 in February, so a couple months. And then the 7th edition in April 1978. So this one is at least 1978. But you can see they must have been just helter skelter. They've put this book out and it's gone gangbusters. So you can just imagine Rowena ringing the publishing house and saying, print more, print more. They're selling like hotcakes. Well, they certainly are and they still are. The secondhand market is, uh, yeah, flourishing, so to speak. So this one, when it came out, it was £13 printed there. And of course, it is printed in 2000. So they definitely... Um, you know, have been um, printed for a while. And this one's been, you know, pillaged a little bit. Not by myself. This one came like that. So it's not fully intact. There's a few pages missing. But that's okay. So now what else did I want to show you? So that's the two. But they will have different dust covers. So if you don't see the exact thing, it might be because they've just done uh, a different cover. And as they went through the years, so I guess they're trying to reinvent the same wheel. They just give it a different look. Okay, now in addition, there are a couple of other books. Oh, actually, one more to show you. This is a colouring in book that I found of an Edwardian lady, which is um, lovely for getting line drawings if you want to do some embroidery so i plan to have a bit of a look through this and use these lines to do some form of stitchery now we have got this one printed in the uk usa canada ireland australia india new zealand and south africa in 2017 this one came out and it looks like it's one of three there you go that's interesting so there's more of these out there than i probably thought what else does it say? Yeah, nothing much. Penguin Books is the publisher. So we've got a little bit of, you know, typical Edith. We've got a bit of a story. 
and then we flip through it and it's like a line drawing of her book and then they've had a bit of creative license and gathered elements and created more coloring in pages so a really interesting book so if you are watching my channel because you've come from the needlework background this would be one that I'd highly recommend you get hold of because you could do so much with these, even if it's just using the outline of one of her little birds and then adding the slow stitch techniques to it. So really, really beautiful and fairly current. So there's probably a few of them out there. Look at that. It'd be fun to reproduce some of these. Whether they'd look like the originals is another thing, but yeah, gorgeous. So that one is definitely worth grabbing if you can get your hands on one of those. But if you typed in exactly that, the Country Diaries of an Edwardian Lady uh, colouring in book, I think, um, yeah, I think you'd have something pop up. Now, I think that's all, yes, that's all of the uh, Edith books I've got. But I've got three other books that if you're interested in adding them to your collection, these are definitely worth grabbing. I just want to grab actually one more. Where is it? Okay, hang in there. Oh, actually, okay. there's more than one. Oh, goodness me. I just love collecting these books and I haven't had the heart to even open them up yet because they're just, yeah, beautiful. I think once I get a second one, maybe I might. But even then, I'm in no rush to get a second one. Goodness me, where does it end? Uh, England is a garden. Now, this one come via, uh, someone was talking about it on their YouTube channel. It may have even been Rachel. And it's just gorgeous. So I'd highly recommend this one as well. And it is drawings of typical English flowers. But in the background are some of their architecture so you'll get your um, uh, wisteria and then in the background an image of where that wisteria might appear like draping over a house these daffodils growing in fields just around the base of the tree it's a really really pretty book even just to have on your coffee table like it's yeah, beautiful just gorgeous it's one of those books that if I'm feeling a little flat, I just go looking through this and something will come to me to, you know, to do. Look at the cherry blossoms, the daisies around the church, Canterbury Church, the Marguerite Daisy. Mm, beautiful. So if that's something that you think you might like to add to your collection, go hunting for that one and they're out there too now that was printed maybe 2004 someone's names on the inside of that let's have a look uh, 1985 first published but it was reprinted in 1988 so there'd be heaps of these around okay so that's a, a must if you want something for your collection now, everyone talks about these little Collins um, pocket guide field um, books. And there's a few of them out there. Here's another one. So I'm guessing for those who like to traipse through the wilderness, looking at plants, these little books are quite popular for, um, I was nearly going to say diagnosing, no, identifying different plants. So these sort of are printed in... 1979 and reprinted in 1988-1999 so heaps of them you will find that these all have different covers as well so you might order them and then go oh i've already got that but they they tend to have different um authors depending on the author on just how much detail they go into into their actual study of these plants but there's a heap of them out there they usually got the word wildflowers of Britain and Northern Europe in their name. Now, David Sutton is definitely um, quite prolific in his books. And he's used a, a couple different illustrators. 
and then um, these two as well. Very prolific in their books as well. So if you were to type in hand guide to wildflowers of Britain and Europe, definitely they'll pop up. And this one is a Collins pocket guide, but once again, wildflowers of Britain and Northern Europe. So you can't go too wrong if you type in those, um, those words. I've only got one of each of those. Am I ready to start taking pages out? I don't know. Maybe as we go through this journey, maybe I will let go a little. I don't know. Now this one here is new. This one I actually found at Australia Post. I think it was Christmas last year. And it's just a book specialising in uh, talking about bulbs and plants that come from bulbs. And it's sort of got a feel of a little bit of modern, but it's also got a feel of some of these older wildflower books. So I, I just, it caught my eye and I thought that's got some gorgeous photos through it. Am I ready to cut it up? Probably not. Maybe it'll be popular in 50 years time and everyone will be chasing this book down. I don't know. What did I pay for it? Probably too much. Uh, it was $17 reduced to $9.95, so that helped. You know when you're standing in the queue at the post office and they have all those random items? They do in Australia anyway. And that random item was this book that jumped out at me. So an interesting little one. Now, I'm pretty sure it would have been published. Is that a name I just spotted somewhere? No, different surname. Um, when was it published? It's not saying. It'll be current. There we go. 2019. Okay, Botanical Gardens. Royal Botanical Gardens, UK. Alright, so that's definitely worth um, having a look for but it is a little bit modern, but has that styling of the um, older ones. Now, the next one, this was a random one that I found in an op shop and it's just beautiful. It's Wildflowers in Watercolour Journal. Okay, so another one, if you saw it, grab it. It has a dust cover, so it might look like that if you um, see it in an op shop. <coughs> And it is a study of the wildflowers, all painted, and it's beautiful. The pages are glossy, so if you don't like that glossy feeling in your journals, um, it's not for you. But I think the intention was, this is the inspiration, and that's where you could draw it, paint it. I don't know. It's not perfect paper for doing watercolour on, by all means, but you could probably do a bit of a sketch there if we are so inclined as you work through the little diary. Look at that. Isn't it just so pretty? Very talented. Beautiful. So when was this one printed? So there is certainly opportunities to find more modern books. Must be in the back. Here we go. Western Australian book. Okay, so this is an Aussie book, 2000, Aussie Lady. Lovely. So I'm sure if you went looking for Philippa's work, you would find probably quite a lot. Very talented. So that one is definitely still around and it would be a lovely addition to your collection. Oh, look at the wattle. The little wrens, classic Australia. Little boy, he's so pretty. And the little girl, well, she's a little plainer, but he's, you know, all about look at me. And he often has a harem of these. He's a, he's a naughty little boy, this one. Often when you're in a queue to go through a drive through for fast food, not saying I do regularly, but they love living in the hedges. So I know there's a McDonald's near our store at Virginia. And if we're wanting a quick breakfast on the way to the uh, store, my husband and I'll pull into this drive through and it's got this huge hedge that wraps right around the whole building and it is just full of these. And this little guy, there'll be a couple boys, one or two, and then probably 30 little girls. So, yeah. And in spring, you can imagine what's going on. It's just uh, a hive of activity is all I'll say. 
They're just beautiful. I'd hate to be the, the guy that has to hedge it because he would know they're in there and he'd just be like holding his breath as he run the hedging blade over the hedge. Yeah, I wouldn't want that job. That could end up badly for the hedge, of course. Anyway, <clears throat> and the last book in my random collection of other than Edith is this one. Now this one, let me just push them out of the way. This one I saw with Rachel. Now it's quite unusual. It's um, it's certainly not English. I'm guessing it might even be Italian or something like that or French. It is really gorgeous. I'm going to say it's Italian. Look at that. Uh, so it's a collection of images in the national Austrian. Oh, here we go. Plant Kingdom. Austrian. Mm. Okay, look at that. So it's a quite a unusual book, like in the style of plants. You'll go through and you'll find lots of different ways artists have interpreted their plants. Look at that, straight out of a, a nature journal. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. Now, I do have two of these because I knew I wanted one and I ordered it when I found it. Then about a month went by and I kept thinking I must try and find one of those books. For some reason, it just slipped out of my mind that I actually had ordered it. So, oh, look at that. So the second one turned up. So there's a possibility that I could do something with this, but I don't know. Isn't it hard? We gather these beautiful things. And to break them down, oh, it just kills me. I don't know why. And as I said in a previous video, when I was traipsing around an op shop, I realised that I was buying things from other ladies' craft rooms. Now, for whatever reason, they were ended there, whether it be departing this earth or they just became too ill to actually use them. So there's been a clean out. And it sort of made me feel a bit sad because I'm gathering all these treasures myself, like we do, and they could all just end up in an op shop and all I've done is just flip through the book. Now I can assure you that the Edith Holding family of descendants will most likely publish again because, you know, they obviously are considering things because look, there's this colouring in book when the colouring in book phase went crazy. So they're definitely still putting their works out there. And now that they've probably cottoned on that we're all cutting them up, they'll be thinking, oh, we could do another run of those books. Look at that peanut bush. Mm. So this is like a bit of a mix of all sorts of artists from all over Europe, by the looks of it. I'm seeing all sorts of names here from around the world, even a few English. Just a gorgeous little book and a, a lovely little size. So I will list... All of these, that's it without its jacket on. I will list all of these books in the description. And this is what I would consider a, a good collection of books if you wanted to use them in journals of a nature theme that had that feel of Edith Holding. Or you just wanted to, and there's the English one as well. Or you just want to... Um, you know, have a, a lovely collection of books that just make you feel good when you flip through them. So there's the story, there's the needlework one. And then of course, we've got the original two, the, the Edwardian, the nature notes and the country diary. Okay. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna finish the video here. That's just the start of it. As I said, I don't know what I'm actually going to do. Actually, before I go, I just want to show you some kits. And we might as well get it all out now. And I can then type it all into the description. And um, you can gather your supplies if you wish to craft along. So this is from My Porch Prints. 
and these are a heap of frames. Now I have some um, dried flowers and I thought if you're going to do a journal with Edith you'd need some dried flowers to appear somewhere and the idea of using this um, frame with some uh, clear paper here to sort of make like a little I don't know what's it a sample like you've gathered a little snippet of something and then presented it in your journal that's my idea with that uh, that's on my porch prints and they have a little video of how they've used that to um, make something so really cute now these here I do apologize I cannot remember the name of the studio actually if I go and grab my phone and look up my Etsy store purchases, I'll be able to tell you, but it will be in the description box. So I'm just going to stop the video, go and grab my phone, and then uh, I can tell you. Won't be a moment. Okay, I'm back. Now, uh, Sham Studios is the artist of these. Now, she's based in the Ukraine and has a lovely range of um, printables. They're just, just gorgeous. And they range from Christmas right through to um, Victorian and, you know, the usual categories everyone covers. But her styling just reminded me of Edith Holden. So that's why I decided to print um, some of these and purchase them. I also printed off some seed, um, seed packets. I thought that might be something interesting I could play with. Now, I don't think the seed packets came from her. No, Patina Printables was the seed packets. Yeah, that's her there. She's in Wisconsin in the USA. So, lovely. Whether I used them, I, I don't know. You know, when you're sitting on your computer and Etsy's just there and you're clicky, clicky, clicky. That's the part of the floral. But then she had some bird ones nature ones so i think there's two kits here from memory <clears throat> yeah that's the image you see a lot that one there that's probably what sold it to me because i've got that as a, just a single image as well and i use it quite a lot okay now i'll also say a little while ago I typed in Edith Holding Digitals and I found this lady. Now she has since removed her file and I'm guessing because she just scanned it. But in the process, I did it again and heaps of others come up, but they are inspired by. That's a very loose word because some of them look like they were just literally scanned, which is a major no-no. So it, um, they're out there where they've used them as inspiration and some of them are really good. Like you could definitely weave them through a journal just to add some, a different element. And it might be just a view of birds and flowers, but it's got that feel of Edith Holding. So even type in Edith Holding digital images or digital prints and you'll find um, uh, all sorts there if you wanted to maybe save your books and not cut them up so that's an option as well now this was also part of the um, sham studio it's just like a magazine that would have come out in the day doing a study or a chat about these different images that are here from the ocean through to um, you know moths and it's see how it's got October in it it sort of gives you the feel that it is part of that uh, notes from the natural history museum of the month so this obviously was something that came out monthly and she has scanned it as part of a digital file i don't think it's been created i think it's something that's been scanned but so they gives you a different feel what else did i find um these are just some general papers where she has put now i think this is sham as well let me just check yeah it is sham studios where yeah here it is um the botanical set where she has created uh just some text and then overlaid the different uh, images so once again it feels like edith especially the yellow and they were in I think one a page, four a page, and then all of them on a page. So not a bad little kit. And at the moment, I think it's like $3.30 Australian. It's 50% off. 
it's the sale that never seems to end you know those sales especially if you drop them in your drop box and then you get a little tag to say you haven't made a decision and here's five percent off that seems to happen a bit too like an encouragement to spend our our coins so at the moment they're the kits that have caught my eye that's all from the one designer and this is from porch prints so at the moment that's the digitals that i'm thinking of using in amongst it all so yeah that's the end of my um ramble about my books as i said i don't know where this is going to go i'm still sort of thinking through different ideas i'd really like to make a journal that felt very um field um like a field journal but then, I don't know, I can't decide. Then it comes to the cover. Do I use a, a book that I recycle? Do I use a bag? Do I create something from nothing? Who knows? I'm not going to make any decisions at this stage. I'm just going to see where I go with it. So you'll be seeing this video on the 1st of August. As I said, I will try and give you a daily video, but it will be mixed with a, a video about Roxy Creations Journal of Stitchery. So if I'm really stitching and I've got three done, three videos done, you might see them three in a row and then up pops Edith while we sort of cool our heels waiting for Rachel Sarah to give us a prompt. So that's how I plan August. And then when we get through August, if we've finished this project, I'm thinking of doing a bit of a study of um, William Morris, another very interesting character in our history. Okay, everyone, thanks for that, and I will see you all in the next video, and hopefully I will have a plan. We'll see you soon. Bye. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm back. I know I said goodbye, but I hopped up from my desk, and I spotted this book. This one is definitely something that could be used within this project as well. It's beautiful. It's a study of different flowers that um, just remind me of Edith Holden. So they, they just go through from the A to Z and it will give you how to do it. Plus even the colors of the threads that they've used. So a really beautiful um, little book. I've done a few of them as you can see by the post-it notes. So the bottle brush there, for example. Now, when the Journal of Stitchery started and everyone was doing their sampler, I had thought about doing flowers as my sampler. And I did this first piece and I just never got back to it and it just didn't quite fit the style that my journal became, if that makes sense. Probably the sampler was more of a neutral way of doing your stitches and getting ready. But as I sort of flipped through this book, there were so many stitches that I found that the girls were um, refreshing us all on and I thought, oh, well, I'll make them into little flowers. But I didn't end up using this um, piece. So I need to find a home for it. And I'm thinking that this styling suits Edith Holden. So my plan is to definitely include some more of this type of embroidery through the whole uh, journal. <clears throat> it's just gorgeous. And it's readily available. So even if you can't get your whole hands on an Edith Holden book, this one you would be able to. Excuse me. <clears throat> And it will give you the feel. Like, look at that. A daisy ring. So beautiful. Fantastic little book. And everywhere. So hop online, you'll find this one. And it's um, pretty reasonably priced too. There's a whole series of them. Cruel embroidery, stump work. Quilting, bead embroidery, just general sewing, smocking. Wool embroidery, you know, a heap of them. So lovely. Very well put out and uh, easy to follow. Oh, look at those at the back. Mm. Some great line drawings. Even if you just wanted some inspiration for some sketches within your journal. Like, look at those. The fuchsias are beautiful. Okay, so I will add that to the book list. Like, that is so Edith, the way that that's sketched. Oh, look at the turkey work. Beautiful. Okay, so that one's going to be added. And I promise you now that is it for me. And um, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.